as we have seen it already, anger starts a program whenever we tell it to start and whatever we tell it to start. This is like always the first active state. And then it executes all the instructions in its active or like non-terminated state, uh, trying to read like the branching point in your case that we were looking for it. Or of course, it terminates in a, uh, in a dead end or it finds. And at every single branching point, it's going to split the state into multiple states and add then all to this active state set as we saw it uh, like before. We can also use the avoid as we just learned to avoid state explosions and so on. Um, it's pretty neat, but it, it works automatically if we are using the function explore. We can always do that, like uh, automate it using the explore function already built in into anger. And with the finding avoid, we uh, while we are not finding what we want to find, it will keep looking and stepping through all active states. It's going to check if that's what we want or not and break if it is. And it is going to avoid the avoid state and mark it like for termination. We don't want it anyway, so let's kill it. And at some point, it's going to also remove all termination nodes so that we don't have like a memory issue. Uh, sometimes it can happen that anger has a lot of states and then the computer gets very slow, uh, but we are going to learn how to deal with that. So it's, again, very important if we are doing symbolic execution the whole time without uh, injecting any symbols like until now. We just need to care about the structure of the program. That's why I was always talking about uh, the structure of the main function, the structure of the check function, and so on. But the automated way from uh, anger can only deal with this very simple cases that we were doing before. Uh, if it gets a little bit more complex, uh, Anger cannot do it alone anymore because the, like, the input before was just like an integer or something directly come uh, from the scanf. And that's simple. And if you want, for example, to interact with the binary, if the scanf is not the first thing that we have there, uh, how can we do that? That's when symbolic memory comes into the picture. We need to create then these symbols ourselves. We are going to start the program after the user input is called and initialize the registers with your symbolic values. So with this very simple example, I will go through how anger is doing it and we need to mimic the same technique, uh, but for more complex structures. So uh, we have, for example, these kind of binaries before, right? Uh, we have like an input, like a scan app kind of thing, asking for a password. And then if the password was correct, we get the flag. If not, we, keep, we get like the not right. Uh, what we are going to create is like a symbol, and this is going to be our input. So we have here, for example, the, the part where we have the um, input. So instead uh, of like trying to give some kind of code, we use the heart as an input. So anger is going to compare and say that if the heart is equals to OSG to rules, like our flag, uh, it's going to be fine. And that's the way that anger is doing it. So the way we are going to do it now is like this. We analyze the memory of our binary. So we have the input, we have registers, and then we have other registers, and then we have code doing stuff, and we get the flag. That's basically how this small program works. So we are going to 
get our symbols and inject it into some kind of register. And then what the program is going to do is it is going to not start here for waiting for my input, but jumping directly to the code doing stuff because we don't need the input anymore because we are using symbolic values. So we can just disconsider uh, this part. We inject our symbolic values into the register. So we start from a different state. We create our own state where all the registers that we are going to use for our code are symbolic values. And then we start the execution here. So let's try it ourselves. 